I love desk setup videos. I watch a ton of them on YouTube all the time. So I'm actually super excited to do my own. I've been working with the setup I have here for the better part of a year, and it's worked pretty well for me. I actually have some bigger ambitions for my workspace, but I'm working out of an apartment, so I only have so much room. So I gotta work with what I have. The design goal around this setup was to make it so that I could easily switch between my iPad Pro and my work MacBook Pro. The setup had to facilitate working with both. I think it does it pretty well, and I'm happy to say we are going to go over it today. In my day job, I work as a software developer. Once I'm done with work, I generally switch to my iPad for things like writing blog posts, planning these videos, editing these videos. There's some light coding, but I'm finding more and more that I prefer to leave the coding to working hours and spend my free time doing more creative pursuits like videos for this channel. So let's start briefly by talking about the machines. So my primary portable computer is my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It has the M1 chip and eight gigs of RAM. And as you're probably aware, it is a beast of a machine. It handles everything I throw at it, doesn't break a sweat. For work, I'm using a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro that yes, is still on Intel. From an aesthetic perspective, I feel like that last set of Intel MacBook Pros actually looks better than the current set. I'm probably the odd one out these days, but I prefer my computers thinner and lighter and the M1 MacBook Pros went the wrong direction. Plus, the touch bar just looks cool and I actually use it. The touch bar, whether you loved it or hate it, was at least visually interesting. I prefer to work in clamshell mode, so it slides right under the monitor out of the way. There's two other machines that are part of this setup that I'm not gonna spend a ton of time talking about. The first one is my Mac Mini. I like this if for no other reason than I don't have to worry about potentially ruining my laptop's battery by having it plugged in all the time. I'll talk about the Mac Mini more in a future video. I wanna do something that talks about workflows that span across iPad and Mac OS. If that sounds interesting to you, leave a comment and I'll move it up in the schedule. There's also my gaming PC, which is a Windows PC. It is a Alienware pre-built that I got, I think it was in 2020, during the graphics card shortage. Honestly, what I was looking for was something in the PC space that had that kind of understated Apple style design. I followed a childhood dream and just bought an Alienware because I thought they looked cool as a kid. So the device that powers the entire setup and enables working across iPad and Mac is my Thunderbolt dock. I'm using this dock by OWC, and I really enjoyed it so far. The only problem with this dock and pretty much every other dock I've looked at or, or purchased is that I need more USB-C ports than USB-A. The industry thinks the opposite is true. I did find uses for the USB-A ports. For two of them, I have a lightning cable and a USB-C cable, and they come out through the hole on the right side of the desk. I keep those there because I do a lot of mobile development, so I'm often plugging in an iPhone or an Android phone, and having those cables right there is really handy. The third USB-A port is where the webcam goes in, which I'll talk about later. On the front, there's another USB-A port, and I decided to use this for the wireless dongle, I hate that word, that comes with the keyboard. On days when I have a lot of video calls for work, I will run an ethernet cable in here and plug it into the dock. The cable runs basically the length of the whole apartment. It's super obnoxious. I don't do it that often. So for the monitor, I'm using an LG 27 inch 4K monitor. I'll put the model number up on the screen. It has a bunch of numbers and letters. I can't remember it. But the important thing is, it has an 144 hertz refresh rate and supports HDMI 2.1. Now to be honest, I've always wanted an Apple display, and I struggled for months with whether or not I just buy the studio display or buy something else. I chose against the studio display for a couple reasons. First, the price. $1,600 is a lot of money for what they're giving you. I consider myself a pretty big Apple enthusiast. Even I couldn't justify it only being 60 hertz and having to pay extra for a height adjustable stand. Second reason is my gaming PC. It's my understanding that the studio display only kind of works with PCs, 
like the camera might not work or it might half work or you just don't get all of the features you would when you use it with a Mac. It also doesn't have standard ports, right? Like, like I'm using DisplayPort with my PC. There's no DisplayPort. I'd have to use an adapter, maybe? Like the whole thing just seemed messy and I, I just couldn't justify it. I highly recommend an iPad stand if you plan on doing any work with your iPad at a desk. Yes, you could just use the Magic Keyboard and that would work fine, but I really like the flexibility of having the stand and then a separate display and a mouse and being able to move them wherever I want to. It's a nice bit of freedom. I'm using this one from a company called Chargen, which I got as a Christmas gift a couple years ago. I think newer versions have height adjustability. Mine just kind of tilts forward or back, but I love this thing. I actually find it very helpful when editing these videos. I do plan on doing a video about editing on iPad because it's actually a lot of fun, despite what you may have been told. Working on iPad is fun in a way because you get to really work with your hands. Like if you kind of ignore the mouse and keyboard for a minute, like I do with Final Cut, and you're just moving everything around with your hands, it's this feeling of working with your hands that you don't get when you're using a mouse and a keyboard. There's not a lot to say about these speakers. These are the Audio Engine A2s, I believe. I bought them because I saw them in a million YouTube setup videos. They were white and I'm kind of on this white electronics kick and they just look nice. Because I'm in an apartment, they're pretty much permanently at like 10% volume because I don't want to be a terrible neighbor, but they sound good regardless. They are connected to the back of the monitor. They are available to whatever gets plugged into the Thunderbolt dock. So I only recently actually bought an external webcam. It was kind of towards the tail end of the pandemic. But as someone who had a lot of video calls throughout the day, having to constantly open my laptop to use the camera was getting annoying. So I just bought a relatively inexpensive webcam at Best Buy. It's 1080p, it's fine. As I mentioned before, the camera plugs into the Thunderbolt dock which means it too is available to any device that plugs into the dock. Even the iPad, which thanks to iPad OS 17 now supports external webcams. So I'm a big fan of the external Apple Magic Keyboard. I've been using it, I think, for the better part of 10 years. And I generally prefer lower profile keyboards. However, I think it's important every now and again to challenge your own assumptions. So I bought this new Fi mechanical keyboard that I saw on a ton of YouTube setup videos and I will say it looks really cool but I really hate this keyboard and I don't think it's the keyboard's fault I think I'm just too used to the magic keyboard even you know eight nine months later I'm still making a ton of typos on this thing but again that's that's a me issue it's not a keyboard issue but another one of the main reasons I got this over the magic keyboard is because like like a lot of modern keyboards it supports multi-point connectivity which means it can be paired with my work laptop my ipad pro and my mac mini with the magic keyboard you have to plug in the lightning cable to switch it between devices or go through the bluetooth menu it's super obnoxious i really 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 hope the next magic keyboard supports multi-point connectivity some kind of AirPods, like your keyboard easily moves between all of your devices, just something like that. And I will happily switch back. But until then, I think I'm gonna ride out this new Fi keyboard. Like I mentioned before, the USB dongle is plugged into the Thunderbolt dock. So when I plug in my iPad or I plug in my Mac, it automatically gets picked up and it's good to go. So for my mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Master 3S. It's a similar story to the Magic Keyboard. I actually like the Magic Mouse, Apple's Magic Mouse. I find that I enjoy scrolling on that glass surface more than I do an actual scroll wheel. But that being said, I'm a little surprised how much I like this mouse. It's highly revered. People talk about, you know, the MX Master is the best thing ever. It is actually pretty good. As far as the extra buttons, I pretty much only use the side ones for going back in a web page. And I'll occasionally use the horizontal scroll wheel. You know, it's comfortable. Not that I found the Magic Mouse uncomfortable. I enjoy using it. It charges over USB-C, so it can be paired with my work laptop, my iPad Pro, and my Mac Mini without having to do anything obnoxious to get it to switch devices. So that's it for my iPad slash Mac setup. 
Leave a comment if you have any thoughts about the setup, things you think I should add, things you think I should switch out, or tell me about your setup. If you're using a setup across your MacBook and iPad, I'd love to hear about that and get some new ideas. As usual, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. On your way out, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, it would help me out a bunch. And also make sure to hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a video. And with that, thank you again for your time, and I will catch you in the next one.